Yep. Shallow one. This is part part five, I believe, on Romans nine. Yeah, so I'm on verse eighteen. Therefore have he have mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will hardeneth. So the Lord's in control of who he shows mercy to and who he hardeneth. Pharaoh didn't have a say when he was ruling over Egypt. Yeah? His heart was 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 hardened, man, to make to to show the power of the Lord that he controls. Yeah. Verse nineteen, thou will say unto. Thou will say then unto me, why doth he yet have yet find fault? For who have resisted his will? Who 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 can resist the Lord's will, man? Yeah, the Lord designed things where it couldn't be resisted. Yeah, the Lord sets up people to be a certain way. The Lord sets up people to be to play the wicked role. The Lord sets up people to play the righteous role. That's the way it is. This is the Lord's movie. He's the dict the Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Bashar, he's the dictator, man. Nay, but oh man, who are, who are thou that replies on, against God? You know? Who are you to speak against the Most High? You were created by the Most High. Who are you, man? You're just a small subject, man. And you have the audacity to speak against the Most High. He's the creator. He created everything. With a snap of a finger, he can eliminate your ass, man. Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? See, you were created by the Lord. Can you say to the Lord, Look, yeah, why did you create me this way? Why did you create people that way? Why did you... This is the Lord, man. He does what he wants. Yeah? You might be a painter. Yeah? Not all your paintings are going to be um, outstanding or the best. Some of your paintings are going to be good. Some of your paintings are going to be great. Some of your paintings are going to be shit. Can your painting say, why you make me this way? Why am I not as good as the rest? It's balance, man. Some people are, are, are supposed to play the role of the wicked. Some people are supposed to play the role of the righteous, man. And these, the, the righteous are the Israelites, man. Starting with the elect, the 144,000 and the one third of Israel, which consists of men, women and children that are destined to repent. And there's the wicked, the seed, uh, the wicked seed, seed of evildoers, the borders of wickedness, the devils, you know, which is the so-called white people, man, according to the scriptures. Their, their true nationalities are Edomites, man. Edom, Esau. But we're the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Hispanics, and those that are scattered throughout the earth, you know, due to um, biblical uh, um, um, biblical prophecies, man. And the uh, characteristics, it's like the characteristics and identification of the scriptures that reveal that we are the people of God, man. Verse 21. Have not the potter power over the clay? Yeah, the potter is the one that makes the clay. He has the power. Yeah. He's forming it. He's creating its structure. He's creating the foundation of it. Yeah. Will the clay, yeah, symbolically, will the clay, will the vessels. Yeah. Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? It's a question. So the Lord has the power to make a vessel or a clay. That's honourable, yeah, which is the Israelites. They were set up to be the righteous, you know. They were set up to be the righteous seed, the divine seed, the blessed seed, the seed that has mercy and forgiveness of the Most High, Yahweh by Shemeshai, through the Son, Yahweh Shai. They're the ones that have the promises of ruling this kingdom, this earth, and various planets, you know. Their promises is to, to rule over the heathen, the other nations. The Lord said us to be above everybody and upon the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Read Psalms chapter 2 verse 8. Revelations chapter 2 verse 25. These are promises. And another unto dishonor. Who's that? The Esau man. 
Read Genesis 25. He despised his birthright. Um, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 16, man. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, man. As Esau, the Edomites, man. They're created unto dishonor. They're the wicked. They're the deceiver. They're the ones that are ruling this earth in wickedness and destruction. In wrath. Poisoning the earth. Poisoning the food. Poisoning the people. Poisoning the air. Pushing wicked philosophies. LGBT community. Yeah. Illuminati and all these wicked secret societies ruling this earth. With the, the, the entertainment industry. The movies. The music. Yeah. They're the ones that are um, in lead of this um, systemic, systematic oppression, man. What if the Most High willing to show his wrath and to make his power known? So the Lord, yeah, what if the Most High willing to show his wrath? How does the Lord show his wrath and his power known? Sometimes he can show it in people, just like he showed it in uh with, with, with Moses in the time of Egypt, the Lord just gave him a small dose of his power in, a, in, a, in just a staff, a stick. The stick turned into a snake and gobbled up all the uh, um, Pharaoh's um, enchanters snakes, man, with their, dealing with their black magic. But the, the Lord showed them divine miracles and won. You know, he gave, the Lord gave a sample of his miracle in a staff. That's the same stuff he used to split the sea, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A big sea. All, all manner of big fishes and in that inside. And able to walk through it in dry ground. Can you believe that? That's beautiful, man. Miracles of the Bibles, I believe, man. Yeah. So that's how the Lord shows his power. He can show his power in people. The Lord can show his power. Um, in objects in animals anything in any creation that he created the Lord said he can even raise up stones to be the Israelites you see how all powerful he is he created man of the dust of the ground hey what if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known so how is the Lord going to show his wrath endureth with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction the vessels of wrath. The vessels of wrath is also the same as the vessels of dishonor, which is Esau, the so-called white man, the one that's ruling this world in wickedness and in wrath and destruction. He's polluting this earth. Yeah? And who's got the big guns, man? Who's got the, the greatest military might? America, man. So-called white people. The so-called white people, they have the, um, the te technology of destruction, man, at the highest level. And that's his blessing, according to, um, I believe, Genesis 27, that he shall rule the world, the earth, with the sword. The sword represents what? Weaponry. Military might. That's why he's got the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest guns, the biggest missiles, ballistic missiles, nukes, all of that. So he's the vessel of wrath, fitted to destruction. So he's going to destroy himself. He saw the Lord created him. To be a mighty power on the earth, only to find out that he's going to destroy himself with his own mighty power, man. Yeah, that's why you got two Edomite nations fighting against each other, warring against each other, America and Russia, so-called white people. So their blessing became their curse, and the Lord did that to show His power. And the Lord's coming back with the the holy angels, yeah, Yahweh Shad, who the walk with Jesus Christ, who's a so-called black man. According to the Bible, Revelations 1, 13 to 15. He's coming back with the angels to wreak havoc, man. To show the wrath of the Lord. Verse 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. The vessels of mercy. Who was the vessel of mercy? Who was given that mercy? The Israelites. Because we sinned and fell off. So the Lord... Um, Send his son Yahweh Shai to give us mercy, forgiveness of sins. Yeah, let's let me get that. 
the Lord's only dealing with Israel, man. Starting with the elect, 144,000 men that are destined to rule with the, the one third men, women and children of Israel that are going to be saved in these last days from nuclear uh, disaster and, and divine, heavenly, angelic um, destruction, man. What Esau, the so-called white man, calls as UFOs, which are the angels of the Lord. But yeah, Acts 5, we'll start from verse 29. Then Peter and other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than man. See, you're supposed to obey the Lord. You're supposed to obey what the scripture says. Not those wicked pastors, you know, teaching you false lies, ignorant to the scriptures, or these regular people on this earth, man, walking in the street. Talk of rubbish, and their, their mind is infused with this world, infused with Esau, the so called white man's philosophy. They look at the white man as God or their teacher because he wears a suit and tie and he he owns the money, man. You got you to obey the Mosai, Yahweh, by Shimshai rather than man. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom he slew and hanged on a tree, who the world calls Jesus Christ. He died for our sins. The, the nation of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Hispanics. Him have the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, yeah, prince of peace to his people, Israel, and a savior. That's his name, Yahweh Shai. You know, that goes, it goes with his name. Yeah, Yahweh Shai meaning what? He is the deliverer. He is the savior. Yeah. Yeah, and a savior for to give repentance, repentance, forgiveness of sins. Yeah. Repent means what? Re means the back or go back. And pent, I mean, he's um, sorrowful, man. So to go back sorrowful to who? The Lord, the, the Heavenly Father. That's why the Most High, Yahweh, sent his son, Yahweh Shai, to be the mediator or the middleman or the, the person to reconcile Israel back to the Most High. Yeah, For to give repentance to Israel, not any other nation. So that's the mercy right there. The vessels of mercy are Israelites. For to give repentance to Israel, not any other nation. And forgiveness of sins. Why? Because we fell off. We will be disobedient in our past lives, even now. So the Lord's actually got an everlasting mercy for, for Israel, man. So back in Romans 9. Yeah, and it says, uh, his glory on the vessels of mercy, which is Israelites, which he had afore prepared unto glory. We read Romans glory, right? He prepared us unto glory. Remember, we read Rom Romans 9 and verse, verse 4. Who are Israelites? And what? To whom pertain the adoption and the glory. So the glory to the Israelites. We read this, man, before. Which is part five. Yeah. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which is Israelites, which he had a fore prepared unto glory. Let's prove that again, man. The, the new covenant. Start from verse 6, Hebrews 8 and 6. But now have he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, the mediator, the middle man. Yahweh Shai, the Lord. He's the one that brings us closer to the Lord. That's why he said what? No man cometh to the Father except by me, for he is the way, the truth, and the life. So he's the middle man. You've got to go through the Lord. If you want to make deals with the Most High, the big don, the big dada, you got to go through the middle man. Yeah? A salesman. Yeah, how shy, man? He's the guy you got to go through. He's the guy you're supposed to be worshipping. Yep, you're supposed to be worshipping the Lord if you want to worship the Most High. The middle man. The one that died for our sins, man. And we're unworthy. We're worthy of death. So, brakfa, yahaw, but shim shy. But yeah. Exhumation, but how much also he is a, he is the mediator of a better covenant. So there's another covenant, man. The new covenant. 
Yeah? There's nothing really wrong with the old covenant because the laws are just good and holy, as Apostle Paul said. There's nothing wrong with it, wrong with it but it was wrong with the people, man. Better covenant which was established upon better promises. Yeah, man, because we're going to be joint heirs. Um, in the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be on earth. That's why the Lord said, thy kingdom come as it is in heaven on earth. Yeah, that's the Lord's prayer. Yeah, and in Romans 8, I think verse 20, 17, 20, 17, starting from 17, it talks about that we will be heirs with the Lord. You know, so we'll be a rulership with him, man. Owning this whole place, owning the whole earth, this universe. As sons and daughters of God, yeah? And the sons of God will be on top, above the females, above the women, above the children. That's order. So deal with that. For if the first... For, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, so it wasn't fault with the, the covenant or the laws, it was finding fault with them. Them meaning what? The people. He saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. What's the new covenant? He's going to say it. With the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So who, who is a part of the new covenant? We read it in Romans 9. To who pertaineth the covenants with the S, old and new. With the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Yeah, but it's still referring to the Israelites because they continued not in my covenant. So that's now you understand in verse 8. For finding fault with them, not the covenant, the people. The people of Israel sinned, disobeyed. Yeah? Because they continued not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. Again, Israelites. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Hispanics. I will put my laws into their mind. The Lord will put the laws in your mind, man. And write them in their hearts, their mind, their spirit. And I'll be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Yeah, so we, at that time when the Lord comes back and we're establishing righteousness on the earth, we're not going to need to um, break down... Uh, the laws to, the, to, to people. Do you know why? Because it's going to be in us to do righteousness. We're going to be perfect on the earth. Gods on the earth, man. And we're going to be judging these heathen, the other nations. Now we're going to have to be teaching them to, do, to be right. And when they're doing wrong, we're going to judge them. We're going to beat them. Yeah? We're going to rule over them. The Bible says we'll rule them with an with a, with a iron, man. And break them to pieces. Revelations chapter 2 verse 5. Um, Psalms chapter 2 verse 8. This is in the Bible man. So we won't need to teach uh, anyone. We'll all know it. We'll all know the laws perfectly. One day. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Remember the vessels of mercy. So who is this uh, talking about? The children of Israel. We were reading it. For I will be merc merciful to their unrighteous and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith a new covenant he hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and waxing old is ready to vanish away. Yeah? So that's the new covenant and we're not in that yet because we're still sinning. We're still waiting for the Lord to save us. And the Lord is seeking those that are diligently seeking him. The ones that are sincere, the ones that are doing their best to repent and keep the commandments to the best of their ability, worshipping him, praying to him, and doing what he says. The, the men going out on the highways and byways and teaching to the, the elect of Israel, and you woman staying in place and obeying your husband, your boyfriend, being obedient and doing what he says. The scripture says the woman shall be saved in childbearing. 
So you need to be of a man, man of the Lord. You know? And if you're not with a man of the Lord, you can tell your boyfriend or man, you know, about about the truth. Because you, know, you know you're gonna have Apostle Paul talk about, it, you know, you're gonna have believing wives, but the husband is not a believer, or you're gonna have believing husbands, but the wife is not a believer. But you know, if you're sincere, the Lord can hear your prayers, man. If you're praying to Yahweh Bashim Shai, He'll show mercy upon you and He may show mercy upon your whole family. You know, it's possible. But you got to be doing the right thing. You got to be, a woman got to be obedient to a man. A woman, the, the, the man's got to be obedient to the Lord and to do what He says. And one of the things is practicing the commandments and going out to teach. But yeah, that's it on that. That's part five. Then I'll come back to you with part six. Part six, part six will be going into the Gentiles. So I'm going to bring other scriptures onto that. But with that, Shalom. Stay tuned for part six. This is the book of Romans, chapter nine, part six. Shalom.